Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at the company Tesla because they just had earnings. Wow, did they crush it. They absolutely crushed it. The stock is up right now. Well, at least post-market 12 smackaroos percent absolutely crazy so i really want to see what in the world happened here and uh why in the world this is up this much not to mention that it's been quite some time and tesla for me slash us has been a wild ride for a while they were saying that it's overvalued however right now let's actually see if things have changed right let's actually see if things have changed so before we get started make sure to like subscribe comment really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well as remember make sure to follow us on next film investing if you would like to join us on discord link is in the description below which it is the best way to get the videos when they come out so with that said let's get started with this analysis so jumping right into the news tesla rips 12 percent gain as investors eye the plan for affordable evs taking a look at what this article is saying Tesla rallied late Wednesday after Austin-based company impressed investors on the margin line. Automotive X credit gross margin rate was reported at 17.1% to easily clear the consensus estimate of 15.1%. Operating margin was reported at 10.8% of sales to improve from last quarter's mark of 6.3% and top last year's mark of 7.6%. On the earnings conference call, CEO Elon Musk took a victory lap over what he said was a record quarter. He noticed that Tesla just produced its 7th million vehicle. Musk said more affordable models will be produced by Tesla in the first half of 2025. Really good. He expects vehicle production to increase by 20 to 30% in 2025. Cyber cab production is anticipated to be scaled up aggressively in 2026. Regarding autonomy, Musk said miles per intervention metrics continue to improve and the company thinks FSD, full self-driving, will exceed human level driving safety by quarter two of 2025, which is actually really close that's kind of uncanny not gonna lie ride hailing is expected to be live in texas and california next year so as y'all can see when it comes to this kind of i guess forward guidance which is essentially what's happening here yeah tesla's looking real real pretty when it comes to all of this which is the reason why it gains such an astounding amount just um yeah 12 percent just post-market mainly because of Elon Musk. So any naysayers right there? Yeah, no, Elon Musk is actually doing very good for the stock right now. In fact, let's continue on with their earnings. Tesla non-gap EPS of 72 cents beats by 12 cents, good. Revenue of 25.18 billion misses by $490 million. And yet, guys, it still went up. This is why you can't just trust earnings when they miss or when they pass, because it could go the opposite way. Revenue of that $25.18 billion is up 7.8% year over year, which is great. CapEx, $3.51 billion versus the $2.46 billion in Q3 of 2023. So yeah, the CapEx has definitely increased, but more innovation, that's understandable. And free cash flow, $2.74 billion versus the $848 million in Q3 of 2023. That's crazy. That's an insane amount. Love to see it wow okay i really do like that just because it's showing that the company is growing at a really really solid pace throughout these past years we'll take a look at the fundamentals in just one second and these are just the summary for their earnings i will leave the link to their actual earnings report in the description below for you guys to read for yourselves so with that let's jump into of course the spreadsheet we get over here the ticker of tsla market cap of 669.5 billion dollars with a pe of 60.06 that's a lot still lower than amd though current share price of 213 dollars and 65 cents if we take a look at this graph though currently they are at 239 dollars and 45 cents now on the one year this is actually not up a lot which is fairly surprising 0.74%, less than three quarters of a percent on the one year. And the year to date, they're actually down, which is again, not what I was expecting to see, which is the main reason as to why I decided to make this video to begin with, because this is a company that is a darling when it comes to a whole lot of people. And for a long time, I saw it as massively overvalued. But as you guys can see right there, 52 week range, we're smack in the middle between that between that 52 week range, a low of 138.80 to a high of 271. Now, obviously, we are to 239.45, so we are a little bit more skewed towards that 52 week range up to the upside. But it's still looking, uh, it's looking a little bit interesting. The fact that a company like this, with such, let's face it, with such uh, <laughs> cult behind it, 
it's not that up on the year to well it's actually down on the year today it's actually not that up on the one year Taking a look further, we can see that they do not pay out the dividend, which means all of the free cash flows going straight into themselves. Their 10-year average free cash flow is actually interesting, $1.15 billion. Now, the reason why that's interesting is because they have just been net income positive and free cash flow positive recently. By recently, I mean within the past five years. So the fact that their average 10-year is in the positive says that these positive years have been exponential which is really really good to see and if we take a look at their last free cash flow it is 4.3 yeah 4.36 billion dollars that's an insane jump let's actually take a look at these fundamentals and see what in the world's happening here so starting of course with the net income this is what i'm talking about guys these fundamentals are actually really good we got 10 years ago of negative 294 million to one year ago of 14.99 essentially $15 billion, guys, as an increase of a whopping 5,201%. Now, if you guys look back on my previous videos, y'all know that I did not like necessarily the fundamentals too much. However, we have now, what is that? One, two, three, four consecutive years of positive net income. Now, it's a little bit exponential. However, at the same time, I kind of do expect that i'm just happy that even from seven years ago to now it is increasing you guys could see right there seven years ago negative 1.962 billion and then just consistently increasing afterwards so with that this is why i'm gonna have to give this a 75 percent i would like it to be a little bit more linear but honestly it's not looking too bad in the slightest in fact the same applies to that of the free cash flow we got 10 years ago of one sorry negative one billion dollars to one year ago of positive 4.36 billion dollars this is an increase of 524 percent with an average of 1.147 1.15 billion dollars and we can see once again that from seven years ago to today they have been increasing now in the one year they're a little bit down but all in all it's still increasing at a really nice rate and even just on the quarter, we saw that they did gain a lot more this past quarter, Q3, than they did Q3 of 2023. So that's looking on the upside. All in all, I'm going to have to give this a little bit lower just because the one year is a little bit lower than the two year ago value. But I'm going to give it, like, guys, a 70%. It's still looking all right. I, I like the consistent increase, except for one year ago. But we'll see what happens this year. And now the revenue. I mean, yeah, this revenue is <laughs> $3.2 billion to one year ago of um, $96.8 billion. Wow. That is an increase of nearly 3,000%. I mean, it's linear. It's a little bit exponential, but it is. Well, actually, it's not linear. Sorry. It's exponential. I'm going to have to give this, uh, I don't like exponential, but it's still looking really solid. Guys, I'm going to have to give this an 85%. You could argue higher. I'm going to give it an 85%. Now, the yes, as a reference only, it's increasing exponentially, which is what you want to see. Liabilities are increasing actually linearly, which is actually what I like to see even more than that of what we've seen in other companies. And uh, if we take a look at the assets minus liabilities, this isn't looking half bad either. Nice consistent increase, especially from the four-year goal value to today. Average total assets of $49.6 billion, liabilities of $26 billion, and difference of $23.635 billion. I'm going to have to give this, guys. This actually isn't looking too bad. I would say like a 90%. Now, the cash flow minus liabilities... We can see that they were pretty consistent from six years ago to two years ago. And then recently, as of one year ago, they brought it down a whole lot. Their cash flow fell. That's not really surprising. And their liabilities did go up. So seeing this at negative 38.65 billion, not really surprising. The average being negative 22.83 billion. We'll see how the cash flow affects it this year, especially since the year's almost over. But we can see that this actually isn't looking too bad again outliers yes here and there but they've shown it instances of just consistency so i'm going to give it a 60 percent which is actually a pretty good grade for this kind of metric now guys shares are standing okay, here's the problem when it comes to tesla is that they issue a whole lot of shares how much to be exact um okay 69 and a half percent or close to 69 percent 69 really really it's almost like everything's a meme with this man. Still love it though. Guys, 10 years ago of 1.85 billion shares outstanding. 
to today of 3.2 billion shares outstanding. And this is even, this is taking into account the split that they had a few months ago. This is an increase of 69.42%. Previously to the current share, it's another increase of 0.28%. I mean, the, if the share price keeps going up, not really expecting anything else. However, I do not like that dilution at all. It is a lot in the past 10 years. Um, hopefully they begin to die this down, but honestly, people keep, well, I wouldn't say people keep buying their shares. They haven't. So I'm going to have to give this a 50%. It's a fail, but I, I understand it, which is why I'm going to give it a 50%. And lastly, cash and coins, they currently hold $14.64 billion with an average of nine and a half billion dollars. Overall grade guys, it's actually a 72, which is not what I've given it before. It's gotten a lot better. Right, it's gotten a whole lot better. Also, seeing it on the 10 year might give me a lot more of a wider range. So 72% just barely makes it to the 70 mark. Now, this is the part that usually this companies fail, and that is the valuation. Again, not saying that I don't like the company. I do like the company and I do like Elon Musk. He has done great things when it comes to like Twitter and all that stuff. He's the only one trying to go to Mars, so I, I, I like that. But valuation of Tesla usually is where everything falls apart. So let's see if anything has changed. And looking at the discounted free cash flow, we can see not adjusting for debt, we got $56.53. And adjusting for debt's actually $117.64. Not bad, huh? Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky because Tesla is just a complete dark horse. Kind of. Um, not really, but kind of. In the past 10 years, they have increased their revenue at 51%. That was before EV, guys. And Tesla's like the only thing, the only company that's really making it out when it comes to EVs in the United States and possibly the world. So I'm going to have to say for the lowest to medium assumption of revenue growth in the next in the next 10 years, I'm going to go high. I'm going to go at around like 120 in the next 10 years in revenue. I'm gonna, okay, again, guys, 10 years. So maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe I'll change it. But. I'm going to say 120 uh, for the mini assumption. Let's say 130% and then let's go with around um, 140%. Now you guys are looking at these numbers and you're like, what in the world's happening? Hang on a minute. I'm not done yet. In the past 10 years, they have issued around 6.17% of shares every single year. So let's do roughly the same at negative 10 for the lowest. Negative just means that they're issuing. Let's go to negative six. So up by four and then up by another four. Let's go to negative 2%. Okay. So these numbers look absolutely crazy. The required rate of return is Tesla we're talking about here. I want, I mean, in the past one year, you guys could see that they haven't really done much. So in the next 10 years, if things continue to go that they're going, guys, I want like 60%, right? And um, look at that. Look at that, guys. We can see that in the next 10 years, assuming these numbers right here, if they come true, we can see $112.69 to $554.43 for Tesla. And adjusting for debt, it shoots up to $227 to $1,094. 10 years is a really long time. Margin of safety, 510, 15, 193 to $1,039. Essentially, $1,040. Honestly, I could possibly see it i guess um yeah i mean if tesla continues to go the way that they're going i don't see why not my i really do not see why not basically this is telling me that the current share price of 213 is still technically a buy based off of of course these assumptions if you guys put anything lower obviously things will change for example let's do a little bit more of a conservative assumption when it comes to the revenue let's input now instead of 120 percent let's cut it down in half by 60 so let's go by 60 Let's go up by another uh, 10. So let's go 70. And then let's go to 80% for the highest. You can see that these numbers change drastically, right? Um, if we want a lower return, we could do that as well. Let's say it's a 60%. We only expect half, 30%. Well, the numbers still kind of work out at $111 to $709.59 adjusting for debt. So again, everything is based off of where what kind of assumptions you believe the company will do in the next 10 years or whatever time frame you're using. So honestly, I would actually argue that 
Tesla's actually a buy right now. The fundamentals look okay, nicely increasing. Yes, in the negatives, but they have been increasing. I like it. I actually do like it. And this was not the case a few years ago. It really, really wasn't. Now it is. So, of course, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And things change based on fundamentals. And this is a pretty good example of that. So, yeah. I actually, for me, not telling anybody what to do, not telling you to buy the stock, not at all. The earnings support will be linked in the description below for you guys to read for yourselves. Not financial advice, not telling anybody what to do. For me, honestly, if I wanted to buy Tesla, I would begin buying it right now because it's actually not looking too bad. So that's just my two cents on this one. So all in all, tell me what you guys think about this company. Again, I know I know I've pissed off a lot of people in the past with the with the assumption there, but Things have obviously changed now. So tell me what you guys think. Do you like the company? I like the company. The fundamentals are getting a whole lot better. And by the looks of it, because the stock has stalled out, it has given time for the fundamentals to get better, which I am a fan of. So that's just my two cents on it. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. If you'd like to join us on the Discord, which is the best place to get these videos and shorts and even live streams as soon as they come out, as soon as we upload them. The link is in the description below for that one. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.